Hi, I'm Yahya and welcome back to yet another video. And in this last video of the series, we're gonna talk about the three uh, modes that can be found in photography. So without further ado, let's start with the first mode, which is focus mode. In photography, there are two main modes that are used in terms of focus modes. The first mode is manual focus, where you change the focus yourself manually by turning the rings, the focus rings. And this mode is particularly good if you're using something that doesn't have good autofocus or something, uh, a type of photography there certain types of photography that this is this mode is good for like astrophotography or still life or macro photography in that sense the second mode is uh, autofocus which you use the internal motors of the lens or the camera in conjunction with software AI in order for you to focus on a subject, which is something that right now is good because of the competition of different cameras. Like right now, DSLRs or mir mirrorless are good in terms of uh, ultra focus. There are several ultra focus modes, uh, and although all of these modes they do the same thing in actuality. Each each camera manufacturer has its own name for the focus mode. So let's start with the first one, which is a single ultra focus mode. So the first mode is single ultra focus mode. Single autofocus mode is a mode where you, you choose a certain point in the camera and the camera focuses on that certain point. So if the subject moves, the camera loses focus. It only focus on one specific part. This is like the least intelligent mode in terms of autofocus mode. The second mode is a continuous autofocus mode. Continuous autofocus mode is good because it tracks the subject even if the subject moves in the frame. So this is good for something like uh, wildlife photography or something like uh, sports photography where the subject is in constant, in constant movement. The third mode of uh, autofocus is hybrid autofocus when you cannot determine whether to use single autofocus or uh, whether to use continuous autofocus, the camera decides this for you. So in hybrid autofocus, if the subject is still, it will choose single autofocus. And when the subject starts moving, it, it's gonna change into uh, continuous autofocus. This is normally best if you're choosing in conditions where the subject is uh, undetermined. The subject is uh, unpredictable. You, you don't know if the subject is gonna stay in one place or move around. Like if you're photographing kids or maybe you're photographing certain type of wildlife where they stand still for a while and then they move for a while. So uh, hybrid or focus is better in this manner. So apart from having out of focus modes there are also out of focus areas out of focus area modes where this uh, it's different from out of focus modes because the area you fine tune how and where exactly the camera focuses so this is kind of different from out of focus modes there are mainly five uh, area modes that you can choose in terms of out of focus The first area is a single point where you just select a single point and in that single point the camera does all it can to focus only on that single point. The second mode is dynamic autofocus area. In dynamic autofocus area you choose a certain point and uh, when your subject moves it focuses, it chooses the, the selected point to track the subject. Cameras like Nikon have combined technologies to use dynamic autofocus and 3D tracking in order to provide the most smoothest autofocus. This is also good if you're trying to focus on a subject that is predictable. For example, you're 
trying to photograph a deer moving and you know that the deer is going to move in a certain direction so if you use dynamic out of focus dynamic out of focus is going to use certain points that you have selected and using 3d technology it's going to predict where the subject is moving and track it with them The third is called group out of focus when you select uh, a certain group. You can select the, the left or the right or the middle. You select a, sec a certain group and the camera uses those group of points to track the subject. This is much better than one single ultra focus. And it's also good for subjects like a wildlife or group of subjects. The fourth mode or the fourth area is automatic autofocus area, which it's like the most beginner one. It's, be it, it's best for beginners and uh, it chooses to focus on something that is closer. Whatever is closer to the subject, then the autofocus is going to choose to focus on it. And last but not the least, we have eye autofocus, which is a new technology where it tracks the eye of the subject. Wherever you move, it tracks the eye of the subject. This is now uh, much better with cameras like Sony and uh, the Canon EOS R6, which I'm currently using. It uses AI to track the eyes of your subject. The second most important modes that you need to understand is drive modes. Drive modes control the shutter, not the shutter speed, but the, the moment you press your shutter button and your shutter movement. So it controls basically the shutter movement. How fast your shutter goes, it, it's gonna depend on your drive mode. The first mode in drive mode is single shot. Single shot is basically the most basic one where you press the shutter and the camera takes just one picture. So when you press the shutter, the camera takes one picture. The second one is continuous or burst. Continuous or burst drive usually means as long as you're pressing the shutter button, your camera is gonna take pictures continuously. This depends on your write speed of your memory card and it also depends on the buffer, which is like the buffer memory of your camera. It's like the, let's say the RAM of the camera. How much your camera processes each uh, picture. This also depends on what you're shooting. For example, if you shoot JPEGs, it's gonna process much more faster than if you're shooting something like raw files. And it depends on the raw file. If you're shooting 20 megapixel pictures, it's gonna be different if you're shooting 60 megapixel or 100 megapixels. So these all depend, but basically the continuous, the moment you press the shutter button, the shutter is just gonna go continuously until you let go. The third drive mode is silent mode. When you press the shutter, the shutter goes up and down, but because it slows down the movement of the shutter, it produces less noise, which is sometimes ideal in places like if you are taking photos at a wedding or at an event where you don't want to disturb the people sitting there. Mirrorless cameras nowadays have a very silent shutter because they can capture image with an electronic shutter, which means most mirrorless cameras have a complete silent shutter. The fourth and the last drive mode is self-timer. It's exactly what it says. In self-timer, it just causes a delay from the moment you press your shutter to a moment the camera captures the image. So this is good if you are taking something like astrophotography where you don't want to uh, introduce shake to your camera in your tripod or maybe you're trying to take a self-portrait where you just press the shutter and come back to a place where you set for yourself and the camera takes the image and uh, so forth. But it actually it's just a delay of the camera. It's exactly what it says. The last part of the important modes that are found in cameras is uh, metering modes. And metering modes is basically a way for your camera to show you the best uh, exposure settings based on your scene and based on your settings. So it uses your scene and uh, 
it uses your settings to show you the best settings or the best exposure that you can get based on your settings and your scene. There are mainly three modes that are available in metering. The first metering mode is matrix metering or multimetering, and this is the most basic metering mode. In matrix or multimetering, your camera divides the scene into different zones and it calculates each zone to find the average. So it creates an average metering based on the average light scene. The second metering mode is called center weighted. So center weighted uses the center area of your sensor as a basis or a reference to meter the light. So basically it uses only the center part to see how much light is present. And depending on this scene here and depending on your settings, it's gonna give you a metering on which settings or if you're overexposed or underexposed. And most of the time, this is better if you're taking pictures in a condition where it's a bit different. So for example, in a backlit situation, if you're standing in front of the sun and you're trying to, to capture something and your subject is in the middle, it's gonna take only the middle part and meter that part instead of the blowout sun. The last metering mode and the last mode we're gonna look at in this video is spot metering. So as you remember in something like spot AF, you know, spot out of focus. In metering mode, it's the same thing, it's the same principle. You choose a certain point and the camera only meters for that certain point. This is good if you're trying to take pictures in a high dynamic situation. Let's take for example, you're trying to take a picture of the moon. If you use something like matrix metering, it's going to account for all the black sky. But if you're only trying to capture the moon and you use something like spot metering, then it's gonna just focus on the moon and it's gonna give you basically an estimation of how much light or how much exposure you need to expose only for the moon so that you're not overexposed or underexposed. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope it's not too complicated. I, I understand that uh, these modes they kind of get complicated so I hope it's not complicated I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, small tutorial ah, it's not a tutorial but yeah this small and basic explanation of these modes if you guys have any questions uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you just want to say something I'd appreciate it if you leave me a comment and uh, yeah, so keep being amazing, keep shining. Uh, I'll see you guys in, a, in the next one. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit rusty and all that, but it's the first video of 2022. So stay tuned for more and uh, see you in the next one. Peace.